Good evening. This is ENCA Moneyline, your money guide. My name is Sikim Gabadeli. Coming up on the show tonight. BRICS countries lose close to 12 trillion rand in illicit funds. New research shows that South Africans prefer cash as a Christmas gift. And we take a look at what happens to the stock market during the festive season. But first, here are your top stories. South Africa and its BRICS partners are acting on the illicit movement of cash from the developing world. A global financial integrity report shows that 11.3 trillion rand was stolen in 2012 from the world's developing economies. The flight of illicit capital happens through underhanded dealings like tax evasion and misinvoicing. The GFI report says Brazil, Russia, China, India and South Africa bleed half of the total money gained illegally, about $3 trillion between 20, 2003 and 2012. The BRICS nations are asserting themselves on traditional economic powers, saying the money lost could be allocated to investment and aid. Money, books and household goods seem to be popular gifts this Christmas. That's according to a recent study by Deloitte. Christmas spending is likely to boom this year. And research by Deloitte shows just what consumers want to find in their stockings. The study showed those between 18 and 34 years old preferred cash as a gift, while 35 to 64 year olds opted for books. But over 60% of South African households are expected to spend majority of their Christmas budget on essential household expenses, such as groceries, and electricity. But it seems people still prefer good old cash instead of gifts. Personally, I think I'd actually rather receive cash. Eh? No, I don't know why. It just seems that it's better for me to actually spend on my own gift, seeing as I know what I like. Cash, basically, that's what I want to receive. Uh, you usually don't get gifts that you want and you can't return it. So it ends up just standing at home. So cash would be perfect, mom. I'd much rather receive cash. Um, nine times out of ten, you don't get like a, a lot of people don't get what they want, and if you have the cash, you can go out and get what you need. In. One economist says cash isn't always the most inexpensive option. In one sense, a cash gift you may feel a sense to give more, um, but the one thing one shouldn't do is give a gift voucher, because that is just a, a, a really a, a bad exchange. Uh, where you're f effectively taking good money that doesn't expire, that you can spend anyway, and converting it into something that does expire and you can only spend in one specific spot. Hart says the decrease in petrol prices will also give consumers some relief and extra money in their pockets. Narissa Subramani, Johannesburg. While South Africans still find power cuts as something worth groaning about, Nigerians have been dealing with the problem for decades. Only 85% of Nigeria's urban areas and 30% of its rural areas are linked to the power grid. West Africa correspondent Adura Achumba tells us how some businesses cope. A sprawling real estate sector can only mean more pressure on Nigeria's very limited power supply. Years of neglect and population growth that hasn't matched infrastructure developments have led to major shortages, and the country has suffered blackouts for decades. But nationals have forged ahead, becoming Africa's largest economic powerhouse, with investors like Obina Onukwa taking advantage of the opportunities. Onukwa is building a shopping mall in Maryland, one of Lagos's underserved urban communities. We're going to have a four-screen cinema there by Genesis Deluxe Cinemas. Um, ShopRite is going to be there as well uh, for the shopping. Um, various brands that represent beauty products are going to be there, as well as children's um, clothing, um, usual female clothing, uh, and the likes. Offering 40 individual retail spaces, a large food court, two restaurants, a bar, and more than 200 parking spots, the 7,000 square meter facility cost investors 20 million U.S. dollars, and much of that capital is going into just keeping the lights on. 
you more dedicate at least 30 percent of your budget for power and that, that's significant so power power is a big problem if it's not um is not adequate for businesses sometimes the problem can get bigger this is just one of the risks many Nigerian businesses and homeowners face in their bid to solve their power problems. A tanker carrying diesel meant to power up this office building caught fire, destroying the offices. Luckily, the building is owned by an insurance company, so they'll be fine. For many, though, accidents of this nature can mean their end. The Nigerian government has privatized the power distribution network and promised to increase its 4,000 megawatt generating capacity to 5,000 by year end. But the country's commercial capital, Lagos, alone needs about 10,000 megawatts of power to function. The government has set a target of 18,000 megawatts by 2016. Well, whether that's going to be achieved, well, it depends on how um, aggressive the power guy is. Now, what does it take to generate power for a facility like this one without a reliable national grid? Well, um, it, it, takes, it takes quite a lot. Um, this facility is, is going to be consuming a neighborhood of approximately um, 2.8 uh, megawatts of power. Now, that requires that you have uh, maybe an integrated power solution for it. At the same time, you have to make arrangements for redundancies planning and an underestimation of the country's power needs have been blamed for South Africa's rolling blackouts. While measures are in place to remedy the situation, like Nigeria, it may take up to two years to see any impact of the ongoing investments. And while many doubt the situation will get as bad as Nigeria's where generators are a requirement, Power use changes, energy conservation, and investing in alternative clean energy might not be a bad idea. And, of course, a bit of patience wouldn't hurt. Aduria Chumba, Lagos. Well, the JSC shuts down around this time of the year, but as the saying goes, money will always exchange hands. So even when you are on holiday, you could be making or losing money. I'm joined now by Pietri Redeling Hayes, who is a trader at Ngunzi Investments. Pietri, thanks so much for your time uh, today. And it's true, right? Money circulates 365 days a year. Yeah, well, the JC doesn't really close either. There are a couple of uh, days where it trades only half day. So from nine o'clock where the equity market opens until about 12 o'clock in the afternoon that it okay. shuts down. But this is literally for, you know, the day before Christmas and the day before New Year's Eve. Yeah. For the rest of the time, uh, you know, the market tra trades 9 to 5 like it normally does. And uh, it does get terribly quiet. I think a lot of market participants, portfolio managers and uh, fund managers and, and traders and, you know, investors trading from home and that kind yeah. of thing do go on holiday. So the volume does get a bit, uh, it does get very quiet and, and whatever. But it doesn't necessarily stop. It is constantly yeah. available for people to, to exchange. And do people... Do people exchange when you're a normal retail investor who's yeah, taking the trip down to Durban right now? Do you think they're thinking about their portfolio? I think a lot of guys shut down, but um, you know, like you said, you know, it, it keeps it keeps uh, it keeps trading. So there are opportunities to be found, and a lot of people, you know, try to take advantage of the the lower volumes and the lower liquidity within the market. Yeah. Because um, there's only so many shares that that are available to be bought and sold. Yeah. So in times like this, when it gets really quiet and a lot of people are at home or on holiday or whatever the case is, uh, you can get some very volatile moves. And there are some people who, who are trying to take advantage of those moves. Because what we also find is we've got, we've got a lot of shares that are dual listed. So whether we're sitting on holiday in South Africa, um, SAB Miller is trading in London, BHP Billiton is trading in London yeah. and in Australia, and anything could happen on a public holiday. Exactly, yeah. So, I mean, we'll probably, you know, we're, we're missing out on a day now. Um, we'll see what the U.S. does this evening. I saw China was up something like 2.5%. Um, earlier this morning. So, you know, we'll see exactly, we now miss a day, but yeah. tomorrow in the morning we'll catch up and uh, if hopefully we've missed a bit of a bounce in the market and we, and we bounce a little higher, we'll see what happens. And what's also interesting is that even when our market will close at five o'clock, for example, um, you'll see some companies releasing whether it's a sales announcement about their results or um, a deal or something like that. Do you ever have almost like sleepless moments when you're thinking, well, it's closed, I can't do anything until the market <laughs> opens the next day? <laughs> well, I suppose I wouldn't really say sleepless moments, but it can sometimes be frustrating if uh, a news item happens outside of the trading hours of the market. 
But what the, what the market does every morning when it opens is there's a, something called an auction call period. Okay. So um, what happens is basically the order book is opened, shares or orders to buy or sell shares gets put into a central order book. And from there, the trades are then matched. And if the trade is matched, you know, somebody matches the number of shares they want to buy with somebody who has a number of shares they want to sell and they agree on a price, yeah. then a trade is matched. So now what happens in the mornings is there's a big auction period of about half an hour uh, or of exactly half an hour actually, um, where you know people can now submit their, their orders to buy or sell. And then an algorithm is run to, to, you know, to, to figure out at what price the most shares will be able to exchange hands. Okay. So this ensures that a fair price is determined every morning. So there's no real need to have sleepless nights if a big news item happen, has happened overnight. overnight. You do sometimes yeah. see, I mean, we saw with something like Sassol the other day that it, the share price opens like 5% lower. Yeah. You know, so that can hurt if you're on the wrong <laughs> side of that. But that is, uh, that's determined by you know, the interaction between buyers and sellers in the market. So that is the fairest possible price that it can happen. For investors who've been in equities for this year, um, it hasn't been that great. It's what, just something like low single digits yeah. um, growth so far this year. Was that expected? I mean, a lot of people had thought of 2014 as a year of consol consolidation. Yeah, I suppose it depends on who you ask. I was looking at a, at a, at a bit of a Reuters poll the other day. Um, some of the banks and some of the different stockbrokers, some were incredibly bullish, some were incredibly bearish. Yeah. Very few actually, you know, called it uh, uh, called it right. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it depends on where you were. If you were invested in resource shares for the year, you would be terribly frustrated and yeah. you would have You'd be very been upset, feeling right? quite a bit of pain yeah. at this stage. If you were in something like, uh, you know, let's say a pharmaceutical company called Aspen, for example, or in uh, financials or, or in industrials telecom. or in telecom. <laughs> Telecom's up 147% or yeah. something like that this year. So, you know, it depends on where you were invested. Um, for the market as, as, a, as a whole, it is a bit of a frustrating year. I mean, I think we're up something like 4% or something for the year now. Um, there, is, there are another two weeks to go. So if things go really bad, we could end the year negative. But uh, historically, December has a bit of a Santa Claus rally, they yes. call it. Um, and if you look at statistically, based on the S&P 500, not the, not the local market, but uh, t trading day 11, which is actually today and yes. we're closed, uh, is usually the low point before the Santa Claus rally starts, if ah, you look at it. So we get to miss the Santa Claus. So we get to see what happens. Well, it should start today is, yeah. the, is the thing. So now we'll see if it happens or not. I mean, that's just okay. what it's done on average over the last 50 years. It's not necessarily, uh, you know, guaranteed that it's going that to happen going that to way again right. going forward. We'll leave it there. Thanks so much for your time today. Pietro Riedeling Hayes is a trader at Ngunzi Investments. After the break, we speak to, tech, to a tech entrepreneur from Guguletu who is making waves worldwide. You're watching ENCA Moneyline, your money guide. Stay with us.